In this video, we provide the solution to question number 20 from the practice final exam for Math 1050. We have to graph the rational function f of x equals x squared times x minus 5 over x plus 3 times x minus 2. We have to also make sure we label all the intercepts and asymptotes with their multiplicities here. So let's start with that. Um, to find the y-intercept, right, that's one of the easier things to find out here. The y-intercept is going to be discovered by looking at f of 0. We just plug in 0 for all the x's. So you're going to get 0 times negative 5 over 3 times negative 2. That simplifies just to be a 0. So the x-intercept is going to be 0. The y-intercept, excuse me. It also is an x-intercept. And so I'm going to label this on the graph. We have a 0, 0 right here. All right, let's look for some x-intercepts now. The x-intercepts are going to come uh, from setting the numerator equal to 0. These are going to be the roots of the polynomial in the numerator, which is already factored for us. So when you look at the x squared, that goes to 0 when x equals 0. So you do get an x-intercept of 0, like we already said. But you'll also get an x-intercept at 5. So we have two x-intercepts, 0 and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to put this here on the graph as well, 5 comma 0. Um, it does also say we need to mention the multiplicities of the x-intercepts. How often do they show up? So x squared shows up twice, so that's an even multiplicity. And then x minus, one, x minus 5 shows up once, so that's an odd multiplicity. So at x equals 0, we're going to touch the x-axis, but at 5, we're going to cross the x-axis. That distinction will be helpful for us. Um, let's next consider the asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are usually pretty easy to see. Um, you look at the denominator in that situation. So if we have vertical asymptotes at x equals, well, looking at the first factor, that'll be negative 3. And we have a vertical asymptote at positive 2 as well. And so I'm going to add these to the graph as well. So at negative 3, we have this asymptote. Just do your best to draw a straight line there. Typically put it as a dashed line. So we get x equals negative 3. We also have one at neg uh, positive 2, excuse me. So x equals 2 and 2 like uh, right there, x equals 2. It also mentions, you have to mention the multiplicities of the vertical asymptotes. So how often do they show up? x plus 3 shows up once, x minus 2 shows up once. Those are the multiplicities, 1 and 1. That means we will cross infinity at both locations since they have odd multiplicities. We have to also mention, uh, we should mention the end behavior, right? Does the graph have a horizontal asymptote, right? Um, so if we look at the end behavior for our function here, right, um, f of x is going to be approximately, just looking at the leading terms, x squared times x over x times x, it's going to be approximately x as x approaches plus or minus infinity. But actually, if you get an x here, this is, this is a situation where we actually have an oblique asymptote. Um, so we actually can do better than x. Uh, we need to actually do some long division here. So let's back up a little bit and take a look at that. Um, for the long division, it might be a little bit easier to, um, to multiply things out. Uh, this one's not too heinous, so don't worry too much about it. In the numerator, if we distribute the x squared, we end up with x cubed minus 5x. In the denominator, if you FOIL it out, you end up with x squared plus x minus 6, like so. So how many times does x squared go into x? That happens x times. We observed that already. Times the divisor by x, we end up with x cubed plus x squared uh, minus 6x, like so. We subtract it, like so. The x cubes will cancel out, right? Uh, then we get 0x squared minus x squared. That's going to give us a negative x squared, like so. Um, we could do the rest of it, but we're just looking for the oblique asymptote. We only need the quotient. We don't need the remainder, so I actually don't need to do that calculation. Um, I mean, if you're dying to know, of course, it's x, but we don't even need it because we want to know next how many times does x squared divide into negative x squared. That's going to happen exactly negative one times, for which, again, we don't need the rest of the calculation. Not necessary whatsoever. We will have an oblique asymptote at y equals one right here. Right, so an oblique um, asymptote. So let's put this onto the graph. Um, so it's an oblique asymptote, so it'll have its y-intercept be negative 1. There's no y scale, so just do the best you can, right? Um, so you get something, you know, something like the following, right? Its y-intercept would be negative 1. It has a slope of 1, so something like this. 
um, label this as, I'll put it over here, y equals x minus 1. So with this information, we're now ready to start drawing our graph. All right, so let's let's start graphing this thing. Let's go to the um, to the y-intercept, which is also the x-intercept. So going from there, it's like, what are my options? I could go off towards infinity, or I could go off towards negative infinity, right? Um, just because there's an oblique asymptote there doesn't mean we don't cross it, right? Um, there's we we don't we don't actually know that information. We could try to solve f of x equals to x minus one. That will be a little bit of a challenge polynomial equation. So it'd be a little bit of overkill. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is just actually use a test point. What if we try like x equals 1? What happens right here? Not sure yet. We'll try it out. Um, so upon doing so, if we do f of 1, again, just trying to pick an easy value, you're going to end up with 1 times negative 4 on top. In the denominator, you're going to end up with 4 times negative 1 in the denominator. Uh, this should simplify just to be 1 when we're done. Um, and so actually, we're going to get a point like this. Use that as a test point. So that tells us we have to curve off towards positive infinity there, right? Because there's no x-intercepts after x equals 0 before the asymptote. So if it goes up once, it has to go up the whole way. Now, at x equals 0, since we touch the x-axis, it has to bend off this way, like so. Um, you cross infinity at negative 3, so it's going to have to wrap around and then go off towards its oblique asymptote, like so. And then same thing at, at 2, we cross infinity, right? Um, and so then in this situation, we see that we do have to cross. Uh, we're going to have to cross our oblique asymptote to get to that x-intercept, which we cross through on the other side. But then we're going to bend towards uh, the asymptote after that. So it turns out there is at least one point where you do have to cross the oblique asymptote. Um, you don't over here. Do you over here? Um, you can investigate that one and find out that you don't. Uh, but this is a sufficient graph for this one. Pretty, pretty advanced question here, but it has all the pieces we need to give us the graph and get the full credit here.